ducking you for three years. Whoa! <laughs> Black Cajun sports. You know, when, when, you're, when you're a mm -hmm. deep water fisherman or you're a, a hunter, you like to say, you, you know, you got the great white shark or you bag the elephant. You know, you go out you get one of the big ones that you really want. Well, that's what we did here today. I got one that I've been stalking for a while. I done walked up one of the AAU games and stuck my camera in his huddle and put it in his face and everything, trying to give him a hint that I want him on this program. But today, I got him. I got Mr. Skip Robinson. We are one basketball club in the building. How you doing? is the we are one way of doing things uh i think it's it's built from the top um with terrell uh myers and ron martin and it kind of trickles down to me like they they give me a lot of leeway but the message is the same put the kid first and everything else to take care of itself so our goal since i joined them five years ago was to get get it get the best kids out of the area that we think are real one kids and what i mean by that is it might not be a top 100 kid it might not be a top 50 kid let's get a kid in ninth grade and mold them mm -hmm. let's get an eric dixon who is a relative unknown eighth grade going into ninth grade and watch him catapult himself mm -hmm to top 50, top 60 in the nation, go all around the country, get these accolades, get a nice Sean, Bones Howling, and watch him uh, catapult as well to having 12 scholarship offers from a kid nobody knew that wasn't on many radars when they were young. And our thing is, it's hard to stay on that radar from ninth grade to 12th grade, but if you slowly start chipping away at that brick, by the time you're a senior, your name going to be recognized as one of the best in the country, as well as the area. You mentioned that you've been with the program for five years? Yes. In those five years, how many times have you guys played in the UAA Finals, 17 now? Well, they be, I think the... Is it every year? Yeah, I think we've won three out of five. Uh, the two that you didn't win, the you two, lost in the yeah, final. Yeah, the two that I, I we lost, I lost in the championship game. But we've been in the championship game on Under Armour's national circuit, I think, every year since 13. How do you balance that? Now, because, you know, some programs, some programs are very good at um, identifying. Mm hmm super talented right. players. And you know, and that's their niche, you know. Right. PSA Cardinals, um, Team Final, mm -hmm. Team Takeover. You know, mm -hmm. these guys, you know, seven, eight high major players right. and all that. Other programs do a good job of, you know, identifying kids and they compete mm -hmm. and they play hard and you see the kids develop. You guys do the, the former, you do the latter, and you win in the playoffs. How do you keep all that together? So, you get a base. So, if you look at the the history of the team since I came on, there was always a base. What I mean by that, you get your core group and you add to that core group. You get your Derrick Jones, your Ben Batil, your Austin Tillman. That was a core group. Mm -hmm. And then you, you come back with an Eric Ayala, uh, a Trayvon Duvall, those guys were program lifers from, you know, really from Trayvon played with somebody else for one year, but he's a program kid. Mm -hmm. And those kids take ownership and what we do. So for, for this last group, you had Sharif Knox, Eric Dixon, Alexander Rice, Justin Paz, uh, Bones, Highland. All of them 15, 16, 17? 
Right. So, and Eric and Sharif, seventh grade. Oh, okay. So they came when I came. They came in seventh grade. I didn't coach them into eighth grade, but they came in seventh grade. So your core group is intact. So you got five, and it's like anything else. You don't, you don't rebuild, you reload. So, and the Isaiah Wong didn't play with me until this year, but I coached him in various events around the city and on, in the country. So he already knew what to expect when he came in. So he was just sliding in the slot. The only thing about this year was the tragedy with Bones that derailed us a little bit because out of everybody, though, Bones was a little rough around the edges. Not as a player, but as a kid. He didn't really... He wanted to. Right, he wanted exactly. To. You know, we every program had got some North Philly, some South Philly, some one some Chester, some Coatesville. Yeah. You know, we, we, we pull the kids from where they come from. Right. There's nothing we could do about that. So, along those lines, when you have kids who are a little bit rough around the edges, mm -hmm. as you say. I think you guys do a really good job serving as male role models, but also really understanding that it's your responsibility to to socialize these young men, to get them ready for when after you, they leave you. And I say that because I know you saw it, but I, unsolicited and unprompted, I was talking to Gene and Eric Dixon, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons they said that it never even entered their mind to, to change right. AAU programs was because they felt that you, mm -hmm. in particular, took that role very seriously of being an adult right. with a group of young men and setting limits and having consequences. And trying. How important is that in this youth basketball thing to you, maintaining that adult-child well, distinction? It's... First of all, a kid isn't going to call me bro. Mm -hmm. I'm not your bro. Mm -hmm. I could be your old head. I could be a mentor. You can call me unk. Call me anything big. I could be your big brother, but I'm not your bro. Mm -hmm. We're not peers. peers. So for me, it's the only way I can see it, though, because, and I'm going to let you in on a, another thing that's around that, that Gene and uh, Eric didn't tell you so. When I got those guys in uh, eighth grade, summer on an eighth grade, I said, listen, I set, them, I set the parents down, didn't have the kids there. I said, if you guys trust me, this is my plan. I said, win a national championship, get every kid at least three to five scholarship offers, right? Become nationally ranked as a team by the time they're juniors and seniors. But I said, if I allow your child to get a scholarship, I made a promise to the kids. I said, if your kid goes to school for free, by the time they're a sophomore, you got to buy him a car. <laughs> so listen, it's, it's, so, that's, so that's what it was. So I remember uh, Eric Dixon, dad, yeah, like, yeah, okay, right. But my thing was, Dell, okay, let's say three AAU summers, it costs three grand or five grand for you to travel with your kid. Mm -hmm. So let's let's round that off to 12. Let's meet in the middle of four grand a summer, right? So 12000 versus a quarter million dollars, $300,000 scholarship. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you to invest another 10 in, in a vehicle. I didn't save you 250000 So it's a synonym for the kids. So for me, it was it was a it was a no-brainer. And by this summer, Eric was driving to practice. That's smooth, and that's real legal. The parent can buy whatever. <laughs> right. So, so for me, so for me, it made sense. But honestly, though, my my the, the way I coach and, and the way I carry it comes from the guys I come up under. So, Dan Brinkley was very instrumental into who is sitting in front of you today. Greg uh, Wright is very instrumental who is sitting in front of you today. Mookie Stewart. That's what I come up from. Mm -hmm. So I tell my guys like this, when we go out on the road, it's us. The program, whatever you get your name on your back and the shirt on front. That's that's what we focus on. And what I mean by that is 
You don't need to be up on your phone one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning. I want you in your room, because we never put more than three kids in the room. So with your two roommates. You really go around and take the phones from them, man? Listen, Dell. I know they go through withdrawal. Listen, we, I mean, I know they. We got, like, we got the cell phone. We got the cell phone box. It's an under, it's an Under Armour box with, with cell phone collection on it. So what happens is the first year, me, Diamond Warford, or, or Darnell Vaughn, or even Will Chavis had to do it. But this summer and last summer, whoever was the team captain, they go and get them and bring them to whoever coach's room is designated. So I didn't have to fight for that because they seen the results. Okay. The progression over time became evident. So that didn't become a fight. And then it showed because if we got a seven to eight o'clock game, oh, you get mercy rule for sure. Because, <laughs> because my guys are real arrested. They got a they got a curfew at eleven depending on it was always ten hours out, Dell. So we had an eight o'clock game. It was ten PM, cell firm turn in. You up at breakfast an hour and a half before. Then we at the gym a uh, uh, half an hour before we actually play. You know that's a lot more restrictive than even some of the uh, some of the high schools. Well, I mean the results don't lie. So if if I'm doing that and we're losing games, then a banner can be created that's saying what he's doing isn't working. But and you pointed this out to me like. I think we've only lost on the circuit like three or four times over the last two years. So the kids get it. They 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 have they take ownership in the program. It becomes their team. I'm just the guiding light and directing traffic. Well, look through the UAA mm -hmm. and with Under Armour, you 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 get to go all across the country. And I know having such high profile players. You know, you, you, you guys get to see a lot of different things. You get to see a lot of different things. How do you see our community? And let's let's define our community broadly, but not too broadly. Let's just say Philly, Camden, you know, the immediate suburbs, you know, Delaware County, Abington, Cheltenham, you know, let's not go let's not go to Wilmington or, or Lancaster or whatever. Yeah our community, the greater Philadelphia area. How do you compare it to what you see among the guys in D.C., Baltimore, Atlanta, North Jersey, Chicago, in terms of, one, the talent mm -hmm. of the kids playing and the way that the adults engage and interact with right. one another? So, for me, it's tough because I think we're not together enough and, and the aspects that we need to be in order to be successful as a conglomerate. And what I mean by that, all of the programs in the area. Now, and I've done, I went to the extremes and Kamal and Amaro, like, Dell, I can't take every kid. I only really want nine. And I'll tell a kid who's calling me to come join where you're one. They'll stay where you're at. That's a better situation for you. And I feel like it needs to be more of that and us coming to Gleb coming together as a whole and being on the same page and communicating. Because when you go to Chicago, you go to D.C., I ain't saying it's a kumbaya and all that, but they seem like they have it a little better, better than we do. It's going to be guys out here to hear you say that they just not going to believe that kids call. Because I, I know how people perceive mm -hmm. And you know, I, th I think people project too, because they what they really think is, well, what would I do in that situation? Right. And they're gonna put that on you, me, or whoever else. Right. They say that's how everybody deals with it. So you feel that there, and I've seen that. I've right. actually seen, in all honesty, I've seen, um, I've seen Philly Pride do that. Right. I've seen. I've seen Final do that, you know, mm -hmm. just call and just say, you know, such and such called me. I don't think that's a good fit. You know, why would he do that? You know, he probably should stay where he is. You know, they got a good team. He's going to be seen. So how do we get more of that? How do we make that more commonplace? Sort of like a gentleman's agreement. Well, first and foremost, kids shouldn't be allowed to make adult decisions. And I'm talking about if there's a kid 
I want to leave this program. Well, first of all, young fella, you need to sit down and figure out what's really going on if you need to leave. Or can this be worked out amongst the adults, whether it's the parents in the program or whoever's helping a young man get to wherever he's trying to go. But on the other end of it, though, you got <laughs> you find yourself in a situation where people putting their hands in a pot but don't understand what's really going on. So one of my one of my starters last summer, people told him to leave because we were making a major addition. But I was making a major addition to help the kid. I wanted the kid to have a chance to showcase his talent. So when I sat down with Ryan and Terrell, they was like, we trying to do this. I'm like, yeah, let's do that to help out this kid mm -hmm. so he can grow. And so when we go to Vegas or Atlanta or Indianapolis, people could see how much he's grown over the last year or 14 months, whatever it may have been. But people are saying, no, don't play there. They added this kid. Dell, again, I'm only taking nine guys. Mm -hmm. Everybody gonna play. So 32, right? Times five is what? 160, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I play, that's 20 minutes per kid, per game. Let's say if it, if it all equals out. That's eight kids. That's eight kids, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say if I'm only playing eight. Mm -hmm. If you can't showcase your skills to a college coach within two, two quarters, and a half, you shouldn't be playing basketball. And it's, it's just simple as that. But it, will we let, will we ever get to that point? I don't think so. But we still need to be working towards that goal to being better men to the kids as far as everybody being on the same page. And it's a kid from Kayla. And I haven't, you know, me and Lonnie, I haven't talked to Lonnie. I haven't talked to anybody over there. When a parent called, I said, listen, that kid's been there, let him stay there. Mm -hmm. Whatever y'all got going on, y'all need to figure that out as a unit. And and it's, I'm not extremely close to Lonnie, but I've been around Lonnie and calling them. Mm -hmm. And what I know for sure is that once you're a part of that, mm -hmm. they ride hard for their kids. They ride very hard, they push hard. They try to find situations that'll work for the kids. And I, I feel that way about all the organizations in the city. You know, what where, where it gets a little tricky is when it's a kid that's not in your program and you, you know, maybe sticking your hand in, it yeah. gets a little but among the kids that are part of your yeah. individual program, all you guys do a really good job with those kids. And then what people don't understand is though. This is a paid full time. This is an unpaid full time job. I don't, from when is it hard? From March to no, July? No, it's really hard from January to to September because you gotta watch your guys in the high school season. You need to go support them. You need to make sure everything is okay. You need to tap in with the high school coach and figure out what's going on. And you really need to see them during the high school season to figure out how it's gonna transfer to AAU. And the most important thing, Dell, if you have an elite program, if that kid is coming, whatever whatever high school that kid is coming from, he's probably the, the first or second best player on okay. that team. So you're best, you're basically putting together an all star team. So you got to figure out how to get these nine kids. Dude, averaging twenty one, you thinking he might get nine or eleven right night for you, right? But I don't know how it's going to look. This summer, but summers prior, besides Dixon, nobody averaged over 12. Mm -hmm. And he's going to Nova. Wong's going to Miami. Mm -hmm. Quadis is at his top five, and they're all power conference situations. Xander's going to Bucknell. Bones is going to end up going mid to high. Sharif is going to go mm -hmm. mid to high. So you really can't. What, what are we discussing? The numbers don't. Right. And as a program, having as much success as we did, uh, Breland signed to NJIT. Tyrone Lyons, who was here last year, is playing major minutes at North Carolina A&T. So that's 10 kids mm -hmm. on, on one team. Amir Harris is going to end up getting something in Division Two. So 
you really can't argue with the results. And, and I, I thought Paz, the Paz was a little more patient. I mean, he wanted to lock it in. But he had, he no, he had some situations coming. But like you said, he didn't want to be patient. Mm -hmm. He was a 3.5 GPA mm -hmm. and like 1180, 1190 on SAT. And I think his frustration came in because he was surrounded by two Patriot League schools that looked over him that he thought the guys that they took at his position, he was just as good as. And some schools called and I said, listen, they want to see you at high school season. But in fairness to uh, East Stroudsburg, they, they, that's a strong. Yeah, they did. They, 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 did, they did an excellent job. I'm mm -hmm. talking about we would see these guys in places. We just going to, you know, put some of our, our road work in and sharpen our, our knives and you look you know, like, what is this guy hey, on. <laughs> Yeah, like, what is this guy doing here? Let's talk, let's talk about that for a minute. The, the role, the importance of the work that college coaches put in in determining these recruiting outcomes. Because what's going on right now is a lot, I think a lot of people who are fans right. of the game, they're trying to understand why you see the dynamic that you see. Let's go down the list. Dr. Scott's going to Maryland. Mm -hmm. Wong's going to Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric is going to Villanova. Naeem's going to Florida State. Right. Who am I missing? Bishop's going to Xavier. Right. Um, well, Hakeem Hart's staying at, at St. Joe's. Um, and you got some got Seth's going to Penn Seth's State. Seth's going to Penn State. So if I'm a casual observer and I'm just a fan and I remember, well, Nate Blackwell went to Temple. Lionel went to St. Joe's. Jeff Arnold went to St. Joe's. Right. You know, it, you're like, well, why is it different now? So for me, coming up, being from um, North Philly and Abbotsford Projects at the same time, so Antoine Brockington grew up in my project. So mm -hmm. that was my guy. Mm -hmm. Like, so coming up, he would knock on my door, come and get me, take me to his games, teach me some stuff. So I associated that with all I knew for a while, Dell was the big five in Coppin State. Gee. And as I've gotten to know the game a little bit and studied it a little bit, the big five schools or the city six schools have never had national success without it having local ties on the team. I'm talking about players. But how do we get to a point where they land them? The kids are gone. Well, I what, think... Or what's changed? I Why think, do you think more of these kids are John there? Cheney was playing Duke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Regularly. No Regularly. Yeah. John Cheney had five nine conference games against UNLV. The Blue Bloods, yes, yes. right? So the kids, you got to put that somewhere for the kids to see it. I can talk to on Blue in the Face, the parent, the other programs, Final, k -Low, Pride, but if the kid can't relate it to anything, they don't want to do it. Do you think, I have a hypothesis. I think that you guys, <laughs> you guys take these kids to Dallas, to Indianapolis, you take them to California, you show them, where else y'all go? Y'all go to Hampton, Virginia, you go, what are some of that? Florida. Right, so, right, so, and, and like a, a six week spring, we were in Vegas, Atlanta, uh, we'd be all over the place, man. So the kids, so this See summer, a lot. yeah, it was five flights. <laughs> Nate Blackwell, Lionel Simmons probably was never on a plane till they got to college. Right, right. Whereas your kids have been on plane, some kids from sixth, seventh grade right. on up. Team Jacko, Mark taking his kids right. all over the place. So now you guys take them all over the country. Right. They get into the gym. 50, 100, 150 high major coaches sitting four feet from them along the baseline right. watching them play. I'm standing there sometimes watching y'all coach. After a game, I hear guys saying, you know what? All these coaches here to see, and you play like shit. You ain't doing shit. You got, now's the time. Show up. Da, da, da. 
So the kids get this message. Okay, I'm mm-hmm. here. I flew here. I'm playing for all those coaches right there. Then when it comes time to choose the college, people wonder why the kids go and play for those same coaches that you put them so, in front of. So for me, um, the thing that's that stood out for me early on is I think and I'm I'm not saying this today as me and you were talking. They didn't get in on the kids early enough. Okay. So, and I talked to Spike. I don't really talk to Phil or Jeff, but I know Jeff. Mm-hmm. Um, I talked to I talked to Aaron a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Ash conversate. I I don't talk to Jay. I don't have a relationship there. So. For me, it's the kids want to see that eagerness. Show that the kids want to feel, they want to feel that love. Which goes to my point about the coaches work. Because guys get mad because some of these out-of-town guys, Skip, you know and I know, they will beat you upside the head. They beat the kid upside. They beat mom upside the head. It's tweeting. It's texting. I love you. What's up? How was your test? How your girl? Right. And, and then what it is is, especially for the kids that come from our program, we kind of create a cocoon around our guys Mm -hmm. that they know how it's supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. It's not about basketball with us, though. Mm -hmm. So when we're on the road, I'm not eating Ruth Chris and they're eating Mm Chick-fil-A. Nah, we're going to find something down the middle for everybody. everybody. And we eating and we talking and we laughing and the kids got nicknames, they got things they call us, but it's it's a family. So our kids tend to look for those same things. Type of environment. Sa- same type of environment, because that's what they can relate to. That's how they want to feel. So for the local programs, it's been some turnover lately, you know, with Fran and Aaron as the incumbent and Ash getting a style and G being there. But a lot of times, Dell and this just being a hundred. And 50% honest, some kids on the team I just had, I reached out to the little guys, but they ain't reached back. So I'm saying, I'm calling the ninth grade. I'm calling. And I, and I know what you're asking. Just come see him. That's it. I know. I know what you're asking. And just just give me a fair read. Come check my guy out. And the, and the guys that I got a relationship with out of the area are coming in our front. And they front center like this. And they're flying. You they get a plane. Oh look, I'm let me look at my schedule. I'm gonna tell you when I can come in. I'm, I'm gonna give you an example. This is how so King Rice, um, head coach at Monmouth, he's a North Carolina guy who played for Dean Sun. Mm-hmm. Uh was talking to Rick Fox. So Rick he's telling Rick Fox they're in the place for us, whatever. So he tells Rick Fox to call Huber Davis and tell him about Dixon. Roy Williams is at our 8 o'clock game. The same, right after that. The next day against Jeremiah Robinson Erlinger in Indiana. 8 o'clock. No, no, on the national stage and EYBL and uh, the gauntlet and the UAA. Still, you're not getting a blue blood coach to see a 15U game at 8 a.m. in the morning. So, how do we, how do we explain the, the, the lack of urgency to get at these kids early among the local guys? Do you think that, here's my theory, I think sometimes when a kid is local and you've seen him a few times in different situations, you'll say, you know, IZB, he don't really handle the ball. Or his jump shot has a hitch in it. And you'll find a reason to talk yourself out of it. And it'll be a kid from Illinois. You'll see him. He'll have two good games. And you offer him a scholarship. So so the IZB thing was, was funny because his dad had, was calling he like, Skip, my boy, better than NJIT. And I know those guys at NJIT. Right. You know, they did. Yeah, Kim Williams is like my little brother. And I'm like, listen, Twan, I respect you, but I don't I don't want to touch it. Mm-hmm. Them are my guys. That's your boy. I don't want to be caught in the middle of that. 
Tuan and uh, Ozzy B step pop. I kind of Brody they way in the situation and said, "Listen, we here. We here. Uh -huh. This is this is what we want." So again, it wasn't what Lonnie and them what weren't doing or what NJIT did wrong. The kid believed in himself, his two parents and his mom, the male figures in his life believed in it too. So. They was like, well, we're going to try something different. And there wasn't no knock on a gauntlet. And I'm going to tell, tell you the guy's honest truth. Dwayne Lee from St. Bonaventure right. was at one of y'all events. And he called me. He was like, yo, who is this kid? He was talking about Isaiah Brockett. Right. Dwayne Lee, my young boy. I said, yo, yeah, he from Philly. I said, Do you think, because I knew he was like slotted for NJIT. Do you think he could play in the A-10? He's like, yo, man, we love him. We want him. I said, oh, all right. Well, you should recruit him. I put, it was Noisette. Yeah. I Noisette. I put him in touch with, with Dwayne Lee. I said, look, man, this guy want to talk to you about your son. And like we just said, St. Bonaventure, I think, saw him one event. Right. Made their mind up. He's been yeah. in Philly all his life. His father was a great college basketball player and again because he he shoots it you know it's not a it's, a, it's, it's not a, pretty yes it's not pretty and he's not a a, a, a real fancy ball handler right. and so I think all the local people see him and they're like well he can't do this he can't do that but Mark Schmidt Pat Chambers they like yo I see what he can do he, I'll jump everybody I'll run everybody he play hard and that's another aspect of it. Sometimes you can over evaluate a kid. Mm -hmm. And not just here, but nationally, I think a lot of times, a lot of the programs don't want to really develop a kid or mold them. They want to finish product coming out of high school to where they can just step in and give them what they need. But some kids need finish a different kind of attention. Going over. Finish product going to right. Finish right. product going to North Carolina, Arizona, Indiana. And I remember, especially with a Jerry's recruiting, uh, I called some of the big five schools and I said, listen, I got a kid. When I decided to like really put my arm around a Jerry, and have him around me every day, and kind of like develop him. Let's step back a little bit. What's his academic background? So a Jerry is a, uh, Right around, well, right around like a 3.8, 3.7. So he could have went Penn or Princeton. Well, his test scores didn't hold up. And a Jerry is a very close to the best kid. So we took the test like two times. So he come in the house one day, you know, Nigerian accent. Coach Skip, we need to talk. <laughs> what do I need to talk about? You gonna pay a bill? <laughs> what do I need to talk about? He came home, Dell. He said, I don't wanna take the test no more. It was frustrating. Yeah, he said, if I had time, and, and we did some prep stuff, and man, you talked about mm -hmm. that. But he just was to the point like he just didn't wanna do it anymore. So he was like, whoever liked me, what? As is. As is. That's where I'm going with. But his recruitment continued to go up. Because outside of the Ivy, he could still was able to get in the Patriot. Lafayette mm -hmm. was coming. Mm -hmm. um, Davidson started calling. Before G left, G was calling. And G made a strong push. But kind of like Ryder and, and, and Monmouth and, and Spike were sitting right there the whole time. Spike was at my door at 6 a.m. one day. Now I get up religiously at 5 a.m. to go to work. My phone going off, you know, where we come from, Dell, somebody called you at 5 o'clock in the morning, wrong. something wrong, right? I need some bail or yeah. something. <laughs> but a Jerry's with Bonner somewhere else. But Spike was like, listen, you know, I want to let you know how much I want him. But then, Dino. <laughs> Was doing the same thing, and 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 Mom was doing the same thing, 
And other than Spiker, none of the other local schools paid attention to him. So where he's at now, it's like, could he have played at one of the For sure. Yeah, for sure. So But so could probably seven other guys on that team. What what is Ryder doing that is attracting the level of kids that they're getting? Because they Stevie Jordan could play pretty much anywhere. And I'm right I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give oh. you I'm gonna give you another kid outside of that. And he, he didn't play with me, but just being full disclosure and being honest, I tried to get Sam Sessions to play with me this summer when, when Bones went down. Mm-hmm. I tried to get Sam. I talked to his his pop because I seen it. Mm-hmm. I knew Sam. Well, if you watched the high school season, you, you couldn't help but see Right, him. but he had it. He had the Philly it. When I mean, uh, and Jameer is not here, but that point guard Philly it, that Doug Overton, he had it. Mm-hmm. And I seen it, and I'm saying, I like Dempsey. There's no disrespect to Binghamton. I'm like, this kid, they're playing a big five or even higher. Mm -hmm. And Sam, being a loyal kid, said, I'm going to honor my commitment. And then again, it wasn't a shot at Binghamton. It was more so, I think this kid under-recruited. Sam and his dad. I mean, that's him him and his dad. They're they're extremely loyal. Right. And they, and and you know, because it was, it was rough for a minute. Because we say under recruit, he wasn't recruited at all for a minute. But look at Booty slipped away too. Mm-hmm. Before he got hurt, he was starting mm-hmm. down there. So, <laughs> and these kids aren't getting any of local any local attention. So when you call when you call Ryder and you say, oh, "I want you to come see my kid with Kev or Dino," will they come out? They'll come together. There you go. And even if. Like Dino can't come, Bags will be there, and he'll bring the ops guy, or whoever the third assistant is, and then they don't question it. It's just, mm-hmm. oh, where do we have Deal to be? Theory. Yeah, where do we have to be? What time, what place? What kid are we looking at? Mm-hmm. And they may get to that kid and say, Nah, what about him? Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing I think we need to get back to. I ain't saying offer a kid a scholarship in ninth grade, but show that kid. So yeah. attention. Yeah. You on my list. Right. And 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 let's go. I mean, look, I think Kimar Williams can play mm-hmm. probably three or four of the big five teams. Mm-hmm. Drexel for sure. Demencio Vaughn could play. Huh. Tyre Marshall, Marshall, Marshall could play. Jordan and Allen. Jordan Allen could shoot for any team. Yeah. And he, he, and he, he from <laughs> he is he escaped Delaware, <laughs> you know, he, right there. So I, I think they're just doing a fantastic job of built, and they got pride guys, right. they got we are one guys. You know, they find it, find a way to make it work. Um, let's talk about some of your guys that have gone on and have done some really, really good things. Mm-hmm. And talk about them as players. I think the first guy that was really big time for you was Ben Bentil. Right. If Ben Bentil had stayed in college, he would have been an all-time great player right. at Providence. What did he give you, two years? Yeah, it was two. I believe he stayed at Providence for two. What about his development when he was with you guys? When y'all got him, he, was right. he wasn't doing all that shooting, handling all that stuff. Well... Another thing that we try to do it, we are one. We know our kids are going to have flaws or not be good at certain things, but we try to strengthen your strengths. Mm-hmm. So, okay, Eric Dixon can post, Derek Jones can jump, but they're going to do it so well, mm-hmm. it's going to stick out. And whatever your weaknesses are, you aren't going to notice them. And we're going to build it around that. Terrell did a great job. You saw that? That Ben would be all Big East as a sophomore? Yeah, Ter- Terrell spoke that into existence. With the work, though. Dell, this isn't rolling the ball out mm-hmm. practice one, once a week. I've been down St. Andrews. I saw him right. play. He would play one-on-one. Actually, uh, the day out, Jabri McCall was there just hanging out. 
and some other kids. The left-handed kid, I think he went to Stanford. What was his name? Cody Pugh. Cody Pugh, Ben Ben Till, and they're all playing one-on-one, -on -one, like guard stuff, you so know? So here's, here's a, <laughs> Terrell was tutoring Jabri in French. Mm -hmm. People don't know that. Terrell speaks like three or four different languages. He got all that money over there. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't going to tell you that. So, but that's where it starts, though. So, in the summertime, there is, there's, you're in the gym or on a track four times a week. So, our Saturday and Sunday schedule is, on a, if it's not raining, you're on a track from 7 to 8.30 with Diamond Wolford, who's our strength and conditioning guy. And uh, after that, we'll take a break. I may cook breakfast. We may go get breakfast. Then we're in a gym from 10 to 12. We'll take a break, go get a snack, and go back in the gym for another two hours. You mentioned briefly Derek Jones. Mm -hmm. Now tell me you saw that NBA one and done guy. Yeah, I didn't see that skill. Nah, because what it is though, Derek was following the trend: run, jump, shoot. Mm -hmm. the, I didn't see the shoot part, but I it, saw the run and jump. But it came because Rel made a conscious effort to shoot it. That's the same thing with the twins, and that's where I got it from. Mm -hmm. You didn't see that with the twins. No, no. So Not a shoot three. right. So I and I did the same thing with Eric. So Dan used to tell Mark Keith, you can shoot one three a half. Make or miss, that's it. As sophomores. By the time they were juniors, a double. Mm -hmm. By the time they were seniors, a triple. Mm -hmm. And this is what you see today. Their weaknesses became strengths because They're extremely comfortable handling the ball and shooting the ball. And the same thing from what I learned from him, I passed on to Sharif and Quadis and uh, uh, Jerry and, uh, and Eric because if you look at those kids, shoot, dribble, pass. Eric's catching the ball at the three-point line, hitting between his legs, finishing on guys three inches shorter than him. Well, I was down in D.C. this weekend. Everybody knows how big Eric is, and that's the right. first thing you see. But all they were talking about was his skill level. That's and people just like I, 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 I look at his footwork, look at his ball handling, look at his shooting. Well, for me, it was, and it's the same thing with Sharif. He was a, a natural power forward. And Sharif was six six, six six, six seven, right? Mm -hmm. But he always had a knack to rebound and defend. So how do I make him the best player? You add something every summer. Mm -hmm. So early on, I didn't need a 6'11 center. So him and Eric, I taught them how to play high-low. So not only are you developing how to pass, you're also, you're also learning how to read defenses, how to learn to make entry passes, how to be a better teammate. So them two, for the last three years, Dell had an unspoken chemistry. Like, Eric doesn't even talk. That's what people don't understand. And Sharif talks a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, they got this chemistry. Eric won't say nothing and nod his head, and Sharif is running his mouth, but it's effective because they love each other. They like brothers, and it translates to the court. So you got to develop the kids that way. You, you treat them all the same way from, from your top player to your 10th man. You treat them all the same way and develop them that way. We, we 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 both are Sam Sesson fans, mm -hmm. and I went to a bunch of his high school games. Whenever it was a real good guard matchup, his senior year, I went. And you know, I I'm not naming names, but he laid a lot of bodies on the side of the street. He, he I mean, definitely left a trail. It was it was, and I mean, one game he had a bad leg, and he just mm -hmm. you know he missed a few weeks after that game. Right. And he played the half the game with a bat and still left a trail of body. But the one kid that gave him a good game was another one of your kids. Brickus. Describe him for people that are uninitiated to how he plays and what he does. He does. Uh, Jig, Jig is the pit bull. He's the next one. He's the pit bull. So if you if you look at it over time, Dell, over this run, it's been a lead guard with mm -hmm. With that dog in it. So you go Tillman, mm -hmm. you had your uh, 
Larell brought Otis on. You've had uh, Tyler Cole play someone. You know, t- you know I know t- t- he's killing that <laughs> right. situation. You had the Malik Curry's, the Eric Ayala. Eric Ayala started at Maryland. At Maryland. Been the three games so far. Right. Yeah. You got Trayvon Duvall, Booty, mm-hmm. Wong, mm-hmm. Bones, now Brickus. And we caught one after that that you know about. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. So, man. <laughs> so, 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 jig, jig, jig is a pit bull, man, and 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 he play like it. You're not taking a ball from him. How big is he? He's five nine. I'm being generous, but he play like he's six four. I've never seen a kid. He can't jump, he, but he finishes around the basket, and he don't get a shot blocked. He in you know, the left, right, floaters, all that. Just a great feel for the game. He understands how to play. He knows when to be aggressive to get his own or defer to his teammates. Jig is the next one. Can he play in Big Five? Come from my mouth? Yes. Absolutely. Have they been reaching out to him yet? A couple of schools. A couple of schools. See, because I, I, I'm a fan and I do push. See, yo, yeah, seriously. And they always say, I need to go see him. You're the only one. And I need to go he see has him. a lot of Terrell Stokes in him. Mm-hmm. And Terrell's all time great coming from the city. Defensive point guard. Right. Yeah. But Jig, that build, low to the ground, get what they want. Thick leg. Yep. Can't take the ball from him, gonna run your team, assist the turnover ratio. Where it's supposed to be, that's Jig. So, we about one weekend in Philly. Mm -hmm. Jersey's about to start, I think this weekend, I think they're going to get started over here in Jersey. If you got a high major assistant coaching job, all of a sudden, Mm -hmm. and they told you you had to go recruit Philly, where you going? You got three weeks. You got to go see all these games. Who are you going to go see? It actually depends. You need everything. So if I need, so if I need everything, if, if I'm going on, if I'm going on sign, I'm going, I'm going to see, I'm going, I'm going to go, I'm going to go see Knox. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go see Highland. I'm going to see what Roman got. Mm-hmm. That's I'm, the future. I'm, I'm going to come over here and see what they got. Can they hop? They build it. Mm-hmm. They building. I'm I'm go check out West Town. Mm-hmm. I'm go see Wood. And that's the future too. There's, there's an unside. There's, a, there's an unside uh, big at Barnard too. I, I saw him play against Imhotep and Randy Miller's joint. How he play well? Oh, the rebounding man. And you know Elijah and Dante and Jamel and Sharif. That's a load down it, and he was by himself. He mm-hmm. might have had 18, 20 rebounds. Tyreek's another kid that has been around us, played for us at some point, that I couldn't take last summer. And me and Darnell Vaughn got together and said, listen, let him, let us, let him go to Pride. Let mm-hmm. him play with Kamal and them because we couldn't take him. We didn't have any room. Mm-hmm. So... He's he's lost about twenty to thirty pounds. He's eating better. I just seen him on Sunday against Sanford. Played a good game, and they was down sixteen, and a third to Sanford, and came back to one overtime. Would you go to Sanford? Uh, I, would you go to Sanford? I like the big kid. Uh, Nana, I can't pronounce his last name. Mm-hmm. I like Jair too. Delaware is very. Delaware is different because the kids can play, but you don't know to what extent because the level of competition. Level of the competition, right? Bones, what you think Bones will average this year? Thirty-five. He told me Sunday forty. <laughs> <laughs> so Bones about to rap Townsend down there in Delaware. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. Doing that to to make a point. He feels that's though, what the team need. That's what the team need. But if you tell him, if you tell him, Bone, I need I need you to play a complete four game and get everybody involved. He's mm-hmm. he's capable of doing that. But 
Ain't too many guys putting the ball on the Is grass. he 100% healthy, his legs and stuff? Or he's still a little... See, with Bones, I don't... Bones went through so much this summer. I don't think it was the physical, though. Yeah. I don't That's think it was the physical. Yeah. And we rallied around him, and he rallied around us because the thing that he loved the most was taken away from him. So now, though, you're talking about a 17, 18-year-old kid that's been playing basketball, and this is less, and you take, you remove him from that equation? My biggest fear was him getting in trouble, not doing anything bad, but coping, trying to figure out how I'm going to cope without. And he was welcome. His plane ticket, Bones had a plane ticket to every event. That's, that's how... Ryan wanted it. That's how Rel wanted it. That's how I wanted it. Bones, we wanted Bones everywhere we were at. But being as though he missed so much school, though, he had to take some summer classes. Everything is lined up. He's going, he projected as a qualifier. Yeah, he should be fine. He should be fine. Full disclosure, down D.C., um, I sat with Big East School. Mm -hmm. And they, that was the first or second name. Mm -hmm. that they mentioned. Um, and I also, a Big Ten school. Right. And I try to be as, I, I said skill-wise and attitude and emotion, you know, his his his, his self-confidence and all that, I have zero question. Bones is just so frail. You think he can bang around in that, in that big? He's one of them kids, man. 40 pounds lighter, he gonna yes. figure it out. <laughs> He going and listen, I don't know how he do it. He gonna figure it out. And he gonna talk his way in it. He gonna talk, he gonna talk his himself in and out of situations. I was at Jamie Boyer had a joint maybe two years last year or two years ago. At we talking about it's more than 40. How many? 50 pounds? Maybe 60. He, Luther Muhammad is yeah. look like a Ohio State football, football player. player. He looked like he needed to be playing football. And he was toying with people. He right. was killing them. And Bones like, nah, 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 nah. You know what? Give me the ball. Mm -hmm. Like three times in a row he scored. Right. And Luther Muhammad got a little frustrated. And you can see, like, if y'all start wrestling Bones, he going to pick you. Bones ain't care. Nah, I don't care. About <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about nah, he doesn't. He, he, he's fearless on the basketball court. And it's funny. Because I tell them guys all the time, all of them, it's okay to be a gangster on a basketball court. Mm -hmm. Like, I ain't, you know what I'm saying. I just want those, go out there and compete. Be confident. Yeah, be confident in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Be a great teammate. Show that love and fearlessness for the game. And that's, he embodies all that. He took, listen, we, we went up to uh, the TBT at Philly U. And you know, Bones, that squeaky voice. So uh, the twins and Thomas Robinson was up there. Hey, Marcus, man, when you going to come to practice, man, so, you, so I can check you? Marcus looking at him. <laughs> so I'm looking at Muck. I'm like, yeah, he's serious. He was, dead. he was dead serious. Listen, we went to, uh, where did we go? Maryland? Maryland and Michigan State or something like that? He told Terzian, I can get out there and play right now. Get me the ball. We gonna win. That's that's just how he is. He, he doesn't he doesn't uh he doesn't fear anything. And he was he was the kid when we were playing in the finals that was on FaceTime. He had somebody in our camp letting him watch the game on FaceTime because he and it was hard because he got emotional because he couldn't help us. Mm -hmm. And he felt as though had he been there, we'd have won. Would have added a lot of firepower. You gotta account for bones when he's on the court, man. Right button changes. Oh, right button changes everything yeah. because yeah. you know he he gives you so much of everything. And I still talk to them guys. Them guys down in DC love him. When bones come back, you you hundred percent. That's why all the things bringing things messing up. That's all he talking about. When bones come back, when bones at. Well, last last question. You know, we we going through a lot with um, you know, the NCAA and 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 all those coaches got in all that trouble, and and they responded by um, 
taking a few of the dates away from you guys and shifting things over to the high schools. If you're a parent and you're not really up on things, you know, what's your advice to, I say my nephew or my son is in the ninth grade and he's pretty good. Like, have things really changed? Should I take a different approach to this next few years with this stuff? How would you advise somebody? I'm like uh, most mostly newly implemented things. You got to see. First of all, I think it's a farce. You know, again, it's adults getting into situation and punishing kids. And people that sat on that committee or whatever it was, mm -hmm. they don't know. I, I think the overwhelming majority of them had never been to an AAU event. Not even close. And I felt, felt as though us as men in this, we're not getting nine, $10,000 stipends, stipends to coach at high schools. Mm -hmm. Damn, I've lost. I know. I know. <laughs> you know? Seriously, I know. I, I mean, you know, how Hudson's a good friend of mine. You, I know, you know, ain't no money. People think, y'all, it's all this money in this thing. Ain't no money. So, for real, for real, what it, what it does is it hurts the kids because you get kids that use AAU to get become a springboard. Exposure. Right. So the kids that's, you might get the unknowns, like a, a Justin Paz is playing at Bethlehem Catholic. Even though there's two Patriot schools right there, we are, one, allowed him to get on some radars mm -hmm. from playing on a national scale and for some coaches from all over the country that see him in the summertime, they want to see what he does with his high school team. And the dynamic is totally different. So if I'm a, if yeah. I'm if I'm a young kid, I'm in ninth grade. I wouldn't change anything. But what if my high school coach is one? Of, and you know, it's a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. Season over, man. Summer, I'm down the shore. I'm not. I nah, y'all good. Go find something to do. I I'm not doing it. And, and, that's, and that's going that's going to come into play too because a lot of times. Some high school coaches just Don't defer do to the yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's going to go play AAU. I don't mm -hmm. got to deal with it. If he come back, he come back. If he don't, he don't. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a kid, I get with a program, figure out what kind of plan that program to put in place for your development and your recruitment, and stick with it. Cause for real, for real, though, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be other ways around it. And rather streaming mm -hmm. the events, them college coaches – paying a subscription to a, stream, a streaming services and getting their staff in a conference room like this and and watching these games online on, because you know they got a lot more money yeah. budget than, you know, so I'm pretty sure they can get a drop down monitor and have four or five uh, screens going, watching the different circuits streaming. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't change much of anything. Because, because for Odell, How about the high school selection? If, if, if I, you can take a guy like we know that, say John Moscow, right? Carl Aragill, um, Matt Griffin, mm -hmm. um, Jamie Ross. Those guys are going to have a plan right. for June. Right. If I'm picking a high school, should I? Me and the mom, should we ask them like, what you going to do in the summer? You know, it's two live periods. Yeah. Or do you have plans? And if a coach doesn't, it, should that impact my decision as far as where I'm going to let my kid go to school? I, th I think it should, but at the same time, they don't, me and you sitting here and we're in it. I don't know what's going to happen because nothing's really set in stone. Oh, they having the June live period. No, but I'm saying as far as like, we can't name four top events in June right now. Oh, yeah, you don't know where you they don't are. Know, you don't know where they are, what they're going to look like, how they're going to be put together. Mm -hmm. And then, if I'm a kid, some of the events don't mean you any good because they, they're not going to help you anyway because you're not that kid. Like, okay, let's say, and I still don't know how they're going to break it down. Let's say if they say the regional camp is at Virginia. And one of the stipulations and the new rules was if you all state, you get an automatic invite. Is that? They said that? Yeah. Well, Pennsylvania, we got six... Right, so you got Divisions. a you got a kid that go to mom. Thirty first team is second team too. 
No, I think it's first like, team. So it's 30 kids to get an automatic. Right, so if a kid go to Monohoy area, right? Monohoy area might play the same team four times. And it doesn't mean that kid any good to go to one of these regional camps because he's all state. Wow. I didn't know that was uh yeah, that's that was one that was one of the stipulations in the in the new rules. So again, we gotta figure out as men, high school coach and age coaches need to get together and figure out the best course of action to help the kids because right now there's a lot of gray area. Don't nobody know. We know what the rules look like. Mm -hmm. We know how they dictate it. I've seen what Phil Martelli said. I seen what you put out. I seen what the NCAA put out. But it's, 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 it's a lot still unknown to all of us. This has been a very enlightening discussion. This guy don't do no media, so I don't know, y'all. This is a real gift right here Absolutely to not. get inside the mind of, of Skip Robinson. And his partners, Ron and Terrell, are even more elusive. But I'm going to get y'all, too. Y'all coming on, too. Um, I really thank you, Skip. Is there anything you'd like to say in closing? Maybe a message you want to get out to parents, your colleagues, your peers, your players out here in Philadelphia? Biggest thing for me, Dell, is I do this because it's in me. I don't know how it got in me. I didn't ask for this. I wasn't uh I wasn't sitting around and saying I wanna be an AU coach. I just think this is something that one of them unknown gifts that that you have and it's in me now and I can't I can't get away from it. I tell myself every summer. You about done. Yeah, I have a reflection. Yeah. I, I, I'll say <laughs> that. Yeah. I have a reflection period and it's like I take about six weeks off, man. But I mean it's it's a blessing to be able to help some of these young guys and you see them come back and and grow, man, and and, and get to that level. But the, the best thing for me, Dell, if I, these kids go to school and get a scholarship, come out of college with little no little to no debt mm -hmm. and have that piece of paper and go make sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year, I win. Man, Man, the first what the first two kids I ever really worked with was Mark Bass and Reggie Townsend. Them right. dudes is forty something now. Right. So, you know, I've seen a lot. I got 30. Delante West, I saw him a couple weeks ago, man. You know, Jameer, no, these guys are 36, 37 years old. And like you say, that is the reward. When you see them and you know, no matter what they've been through, they're doing okay. Life is good. Your family's good. Your kids are good. Well, we appreciate you, Skip. We really respect. We are one, and we expect another championship <laughs> this year Terrell Myers another championship this year we are one hoops later MC's out there you better stand clear EPMD is a world premiere from New York straight talk America's best cold wild Long Island is where we rest the style of the rap makes your hands clap take care of yourself because the lines are strapped they mean business no time for play if you buy a line they blow your way the more you bite your body gets hot don't get too close because you might get shot knowing that my mom like a point in this rat don't play dumb boy you're smart